All right, guys, so about four days ago, Pixelated Apollo released a video called Total War Has Fallen, in which he describes his apathy towards the series, his frustration and disappointment with the newer games, especially uh, the newer historical games, Troy, Pharaoh, uh, to a certain degree, Three Kingdoms, how uh, he doesn't enjoy the Warhammer games for obvious reasons, and how the mechanics and design ethos from the Warhammer games that made them so successful, some of them at least, um, have influenced the way the historical games uh, have developed and how that side of the franchise has evolved. Um, he describes how CA is completely losing the plot with games like Hyenas and how instead of doing this, they should have just you know, invested their time and effort into hearing out what the historical player base really want and making good games uh, that they want. Um, and then he describes this writer who um, has a degree in classical studies and yet didn't enjoy going back to playing Pharaoh Dynasties after playing Warhammer because of unit variety of all reasons. Um, and the spectacle, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of individuality to units in Warhammer that historical settings simply can't emulate, apparently. Um, and yeah, I, I feel just as much, to be honest, frustration as PA does about that particular take. But the, the, the point uh, especially that, you know, he's really trying to get to is regardless of this guy's opinion, regardless of how anybody feels, um, CA have... Uh, gotten to a point where they will not make they can't really make a new good decent fun historical game uh, they don't know how to do it uh, the developers are completely different the player base that they're trying to cater to uh, are completely different and the games have just changed too much and whatever hope he had has left him essentially and he kind of um ends this part of the video with uh, kind of, uh, I guess, um, relating to a Reddit post that he found uh, by Saw's Not an Alien, uh, in which he describes how, you know, Pharaoh, despite the backlash that it had, um, didn't get the improvement that CA has done in the past when it's got that backlash uh, for Rome 2 and uh, the Warhammer games, etc. And um, Pharaoh is, is just, you know, the end of the line. It's the last straw. Too many historical players like this guy on Reddit and PA uh, feel this way, and they've left the franchise for good. The apathy there is too strong, and um, it's gotten to a point where, you know, there is no hope. You know, why invest yourself at all into a franchise that consistently disappoints you and lets you down. Now, Legend of Total War released a video yesterday reacting to Pixelated Apollo, his apathy, his dismissal of the player base that continues to enjoy newer Total War games like the Warhammers, Troy, and Pharaoh. Um, and he goes on to describe how, you know, we've got all these people who are sharing their opinions and expressing how they feel, the vision for what good Total War is, how they want the future of the franchise to be, and they're continually being dismissed. They're being criticized to oblivion. They're being invalidated, essentially. And as long as people treat each other this way, the series, um, or really, rather, the community, will continue to stagnate. And because the community stagnates, opinions are not shared, people leave the franchise, CA will never really hear out and consider what people want out of the franchise in future games. And so the series will stagnate and fall as well. Um, if you haven't watched either of these videos, I highly recommend it. Uh, Pixelated Apollo, Total War Has Fallen, and Legend of Total Wars Has Total War Fallen? Question uh, mark. Well, today I'm making a video because I think it's it's worth considering all of this, continuing the conversation as Legend has put it. He 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 says in his video as well. You know, I hope other people continue the conversation. Online discourse should be positive, constructive. Um, we should be able to. We should be able to feel like we can share our opinions. Um, and, you know, recently I've had a lot of kind of self-doubt in that way as well, but I've kind of bounced back and I want to share my opinion. I want to throw my hat in the ring. If you don't agree with it, then whatever. I, I don't care. This is not for you then and move on. Um, and if you do agree with it, then totally uh, good for you, you know. Um, I'm glad you agree with it. And if you'd like to share your thoughts and feelings, let me know in the comments section below. And that's what all of this is about. It's open, respectful conversation in which we talk about each other, about uh, not talk about each other, talk to each other about how we feel about the franchise, where it's 
come from, where it's gone, where it might be going, what we would like out of it, how CA has been treating us, and, and all of that. So um, that's what I want to do today. Apollo, for me, represents that old guard. That's how he describes himself. The old guard, the, the purists who enjoyed Total War up until, say, Shogun 2-ish. Um, Legend of Total War, to me, is is kind of like a, the, the kind of middle, you know, he's been around for all of these games, but he enjoys the Warhammer games as well for different reasons. Um, he can obviously recognize the um, pendulum of, of CA's uh, releasing a game that isn't quite ready and broken and then fixing it later and the kind of apathy that that might create, the uh, anger and the backlash that the community might feel towards that. And though that pendulum has always swung the other way, um, Pharaoh is an example in which, you know, uh, people backlashed and felt really angry towards the way it was released, and yet Dynasties didn't really do enough to get more of uh, more of the people who wrote it off to come back to it and try it out. I guess I want to come in and, and kind of say, you know, I've been around from Shogun Total War, the original, all the way until, you know, recently Pharaoh as well. I've been around for all of it. I've seen Rome 2 uh, release its fall. I've, I've you know, played uh, Empire and, and original Shogun, Medieval, Medieval 2, Rome. I've played all of them. And uh, I guess uh, I want to come at it from a, a few different angles. You know, um, Legend here goes on about this dismissal, the apathy, which I really, really agree with. Um, Apollo goes in by saying, you know, the, the franchise has essentially lost too many of its historical players for CA to really be that invested in it. And um, not just Total War, but generally the industry, historical strategy games have taken a slump and there's nothing really out there that competes with Total War. And like Legend said, the amount of Warhammer gameplay uh, design and formula that has seeped into the historical titles post Attila, coupled with the lack of real good effort to make these games uh, what the fans really want and have been asking for, has alienated them uh, and people like Apollo and to a certain degree me in the last year. You know, it's 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 neglected us because it just consistently proves that CA is not listening to what we want. Um, and Pharaoh is a, is a perfect example of this, of, of launching a game, a new historical game, at this crossroads, the way Legend describes it, crossroads of post-Warhammer, trilogy is ending, next should be historical, what will CA come out with? It should be new, fresh, interesting, it should go back to where Total War came back, uh, came from as well. And yet Pharaoh released with half the Bronze Age missing, um, gameplay elements that did return but just did not do enough at all uh, to address what the historical crowd really wanted out of a new game and you know like a lot of you have been saying it is it was bronze age again which we had troy so it was just a bit of like why 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 have we got more of this when we've been asking for for years a medieval 3 and empire 2 to come out how does this make sense? Um, and yeah, uh, he goes on in this video as well to describe how apathy uh, was the downfall for Pharaoh and Pharaoh dynasties didn't do enough of it um, to improve things. And he goes on actually to describe, he goes through a little bit about game journalism and how they shouldn't be trusted, which I'm just going to gloss over. I don't really have much to say about that either. But he goes on to describe how Hoi 4 and games like Crusader Kings 3 are perfect perfect examples of how there is still mass appeal, why there is a huge potential historical audience there um, that have just not been heard out. And uh, games like this, with their thousands and thousands of players, uh, despite being years old, you know, I think Crusader Kings 3 is... Um, uh, five or six years old, Hoi 4 is like seven or eight years old, you know, these are old games, and um, yet they still have huge amounts of players playing them. Just goes to show that historical players are around, they do care about history and strategy gaming in historic eras. Um, so why is CA just not doing a good job of it? Why is CA not hearing these people out? Um, which I think is true to a certain extent, definitely. You know, I mean, we go through an education system which describes um, in their kind of perspectives, you know, depending on where you grow up, history and various historic events that influenced modern day. Everyone, to a certain degree, is um, uh, exposed to history of some kind. And, you know, so we all have a point of reference. We're all, we've all got this common thread of history. And um, 
the the problem I have really with Legends argument here is it's not just history. There's gameplay here as well, right? You know, the, there's a reason why a lot of people are still playing CK3 and Hoi 4 is because the games are good and they enjoy them. That's, I think, a side of the equation that Legend kind of missed out here. But anyway, uh, that's kind of the point he makes there. And uh, I guess the, the one thing especially that I just want to stay here on the wider picture of, you know, alienation of the industry, strategy gaming, stagnating, etc., is that one of the big points that hasn't been discussed here in this conversation between uh, pixelated Apollo and Legend so far is that there is a distinct lack of competition. That Total War, um, Creative Assembly, and uh, likewise CK3 Paradox has essentially, they've each got a monopoly on their markets. Uh, there is no other game out there that makes games like these, uh, that, that are like games like these. Uh, you know, you've got examples like Great War of the Western Front, you've got um, uh, Ultimate General American Revolution, uh, you, you've got other strategy games like this that try to create, you know, a real-time or turn-based strategy um, uh, on, a, on a big kind of historical uh, campaign map. You've got real-time battles to a certain extent that try, uh, you know, to get close a bit to how Total War does it. I mean, Great War of the Western Front, I think, is a very good example of how it can be done um, in a World War One setting, especially. It does do the battles really, really well there, I think. It's just the campaign side that is quite limiting in World War One. And likewise, for uh, Ultimate General American Revolution, it's kind of the opposite. You know, the campaign side of things in that game is really, really interesting. There are some fantastic mechanics there that not even Total War has touched. I mean, um, a line of sight system that lends itself to uh, kind of uh, real-time communication. You know, you could have an army uh, in Ultimate General American Revolution uh, traversing out of line of sight and you won't see them. You know, you won't see them for a little while until you have line of sight again and suddenly you're communicating with that army. Like something like that has never been seen in Total War. It is innovative and interesting to see that in a, in a strategy game like Ultimate General American Revolution. It just goes to show that there are aspects of these games that could be competitive. It's just not proper, holistically competitive enough. Uh, against Total War. And that's one of the big problems I think that hasn't been discussed yet. If there was competition um, in the strategy gaming genre uh, that made Creative Assembly worried, uh, you know, that, that forced them to say, right, we're going to make this game. The priority isn't just to maximize revenue, which has absolutely been the priority for these games for a long time now. It's also because we've got competition out there that are stealing our market share. Then suddenly things are different. Suddenly, they need to um, not only match what their competition is doing, they need to out outdo them. They need to innovate even more. That's that's why competition is so good in in any kind of uh, area of you know human history, any walk of life, any industry. As long as there is competition, you will guaranteed you'll see both sides improve. Uh, the overall state of of what that is, right? So if Total War had competition, suddenly we real competition. And by that, I mean actual battles that are very, very, very similar, right? If Total War had competition, suddenly CA would start innovating. They'd return features that the fan base has been um, clamoring for for years and years. Um, and and they'd, be, they'd be innovating, you know? They'd be adding new features like Ultimate General American Revolution's line of sight mechanic, um, actual resource production um, in ways that Total War hasn't quite done yet either that feed into specific types of buildings and units and all that like all of that in a way you know okay Pharaoh and Troy does it to a certain extent um, but it's just not there enough nowhere near as as much as American uh, Revolution does anyway um, if CA had that we'd see a real pushing of the boundaries in, in the franchise but we simply don't have that so that's the first point I want to make um, a lot of people forget about this, and Legend and Pixelated Apollo didn't really talk about this enough, but competition would really put a dent into how Creative Assembly would really force them to innovate their games, and we simply don't have that, you know, and, and that kind of ties into how a lot of people are, you know, if not everyone in the Total War franchise who call themselves fans, 
uh, loyal players, they are heavily emotionally invested in, in how Total War develops and the future of the franchise because there's nothing else like it. You know, we've got people here who've, who've, uh, who've played since Shogun, since Medieval, since Rome, since Rome 2, since the first Warhammer game. You know, all these people are here. All of you guys are here. And we have a common thread of, and Legend kind of touches on this, of... We love Total War. We uh, have a community here where we can talk to each other and, and express our opinions. And we all share a, a, a vision for how we'd like Total War to continue to be or develop into positively. That's our common thread, right? This is what we all share. We care about the franchise. And because there's no other competition out there, the amount of investment we each have into the franchise is just... It's in orders of magnitude higher than it should be, right? If, if there was competition, suddenly, you know, it would be like, hey, man, are you a big fan of Nike? Well, you know, I, I wear Adidas shoes. I have Hoka running shoes. I kind of like Nike, but, you know, I also wear Jordans when I'm playing basketball. Like, there is competition there. You don't really have people super, super loyal to a certain brand. There's just so much choice and variety of anything. It's it's suddenly the, the uh, amount of choice that is debilitating to two individuals in that kind of in that kind of way the, the yeah so the point i'm trying to make is competition would go so far to actually helping the franchise develop in a positive healthy way the lack of competition has hamstrung total war for so long and it's actually been a, a good reason for why ca execs and ceos have been able to come in and say you know we're going to make this game because we know from market research it's simply going to maximize our revenue this year it's going to help us reach our targets there is no competition to worry about what do we have to worry about all we have to worry about is that we make a game good enough complete enough that's really it complete enough to reach that initial milestone of revenue and that's why you know pre-orders have been such a massive focus that's why marketing has gotten a huge amount of investment at ca very clearly you know um and why the dlc cycle has seen such a big focus post release as well because as long as you have uh very easy to make um low effort low investment dlcs that sell to an audience that will continue to buy them you'll reach your revenue goals and that's where we're at lack of competition means ca can just continue to focus on making more money um so yeah that's the first point i wanted to make uh the second point i wanted to make is that you know the biggest takeaway uh from my uh watching of legends video of apollo's video is we are at a crossroads. Um, Total War, the franchise, hasn't fallen yet, in my opinion. And that's what I want to say. I, I don't think it's fallen yet. It will have fallen when CA is no more, when, you know, Total War, there will never be any future game, um, you know, and that's a very distinct possibility. Uh, that is, at that point, Total War has truly been lost and will never have a new game again, right? Um, the biggest takeaway for me is that we are still at that crossroads. Uh, Pharaoh uh, was kind of the beginning of that crossroads because it was post, you know, Warhammer 3 came out. The next game had to be historical. What is the next game going to be? It has to be good enough for the historical crowd in, in that it needs to be fresh, innovative, and it needs to include a returning features from the older games. And it needs to not have the kind of influence um, that the War, Warhammer games have had on the historical games we've seen of late, Troy, Three Kingdoms, right? Uh, and yet Pharaoh didn't do any of that enough. It still had features uh, and influences, uh, immortal faction leaders, uh, faction uh, kind of gameplay mechanics that were unique, that, um, you know, lended itself. That's why they were replayable, right? Um, asymmetric gameplay, uh, essentially, that um, the older titles didn't really have much of. You know, it's very symmetric. Um, not a lot of ways you can exploit these games, uh, essentially. And um, yeah, it, it didn't have enough returning features to really set it apart for historical players as a, hey, maybe CA made an actual good historical game. It wasn't fun to the core, like Pixelated Apollo describes. Barrow, when it first released, was still really a Warhammer-styled designed game in gameplay, right? Um, 
the dynasties update did some good things to address some of those issues uh and you know this is aside the fact that the price point was far too high for the offering and that the rest of the bronze age world mesopotamia and greece were missing those were um three distinct issues i've described the gameplay is still too far influenced by warhammer not enough by the older historical design um the price point was far too high for the offering and for a Bronze Age game, there were not key cultures and factions that were present that should have been present from the release of the game. Um, Dynasties came out and it addressed a lot of these issues. Um, it had more returning features from the older games, family trees, uh, dynastic progression, um, uh, mortal family members, uh, and the kind of negotiation that comes into that, you know, marrying wives, uh, giving off daughters, etc., for gains, buffs, etc., and uh, new gameplay mechanics that uh, kind of lended itself to that kind of historical feel, uh, new factions and cultures, of course, that were missing, that should have been there from the start, and new battle mechanics, lethality, that was trying to come closer to that one hp system that total war started with even though it didn't really do it like well enough at all um so yeah essentially pharaoh what, what i'm trying to describe here is pharaoh was that game we were waiting for at the crossroads what i was describing for a long time you know the historical game that is coming after warhammer 3 can either be really really good it is the crossroads there's a potential here where it could be good or it could be really bad and and that's because it continues the ca trend of uh creating gameplay design mechanics uh, that are influenced by the warhammers and not being influenced enough of the uh, by the older historical games pharaoh was that game and it and it blew up right in ca's faces it just wasn't the game people were waiting for and so we're still here we're still at this crossroads of what is ca actually planning the major game they're actually planning next after the end of warhammer 3 um, we've had rumors, of course, there's Age of Sigmar, Warhammer 40k, Star Wars uh, on that side of the franchise. There's World War I. There are apparently rumors of um, uh, uh, Medieval 3. Uh, and, you know, there's obviously the potential of Empire 2 as well. Uh, what we do know is sagas will be no more, no more saga games. And hopefully, anyway, CA gets the message that a game like Pharaoh will just not cut it. Where, where you know, you've got immortal faction leaders, you've got a, a, a massive price point for not enough content, and you've, you've still got too many features that have been removed from the franchise uh, missing. You know, not enough of those returning and not enough innovation to appeal to the wider historical audience that are clearly there. The potential is there. So to finish all this off, just the, the main takeaway for me uh, from Legends video is this. We are definitely still at a crossroads. Uh, there are still lots of people who are invested in the franchise. Lots of people who've left, unfortunately, including modders as well, which is really sad to see. But uh, the Total War franchise hasn't fallen yet, in my opinion. Regardless of whether the player community is getting more and more apathetic, it hasn't fallen. But it will fall if CA screws up the next year or two in, the, in such a way uh, that that it's so bad the the studio uh, the the development company collapses and we will never get a total war game again that's for me when the series truly falls um ca releases a major historical game like medieval 3 or empire 2 uh, they also release an age of sigmar or warhammer 40k this is the winning scenario it doesn't matter which one comes first all that matters is that the effort is equal across these two games the games are objectively fun high quality or at least the majority of people feel that way improve on previous games and more than ever, they show the fan base that CA is listening and, and listening to what they want. That's the good scenario here. It's the antithesis of what Pharaoh was, where execs came in and said, we can just keep doing what we've been doing. People are, you know, it's paying the bills. Let's just make this game, maximize our revenue with this, minimize our effort, uh, you know, create a little DLC cycle to uh, get those pre-orders in and we'll just continue our current design ethos, right? That didn't cut it. Uh, it blew up in their faces. So the good scenario, the winning scenario is that um, 
the execs, the CEOs, the, the kind of shakeup that CA went through, uh, through all of this backlash, especially from Sega, from the hyenas flop, etc., shook up the company, the company enough that uh, the next game does not follow this formula and it, and it starts actually getting in touch and listening to what the player base has been asking for for years right that's the winning scenario at the same time of course making an age of sigmar or 40k or star wars game or, or whatever um that's the winning scenario the bad scenario is all the reasons we've had thus far for increased apathy in the community it continues until sega shuts ca down and we never get another game again for many historical players that would be uh, another overpriced saga style game a lack of medieval 3 or empire 2 what many many people have been asking for for years or another launch like rome 2 or pharaoh really pharaoh in which you know uh it's it's just really not good enough effort not listening to the community and um yeah it's just a, a, a bad bad game essentially for many reasons that i've gone into already in my previous videos or there are just no more historical games right because that would just mean total war has fallen for the historical community which is kind of what this is about um for me anyway from my perspective legend obviously represents a much larger uh kind of section of the video uh, uh, of the community uh, for me and for Pixelated Apollo. It's really about the development of historical games. Uh, for many Warhammer players, it'll be a repeat of Warhammer 3's launch, I think, and the way they've treated uh, the player base there, the Shadows of Change DLC, little to no communication or communication that is demeaning or disrespectful, overpriced bad content with, you know, little, uh, if any, improvements compared to the previous game. If all of basically what, what we've experienced in the last couple of years continues the way it does there won't be a total war franchise it will end it will fall but currently we are still at that crossroads um the way i see it 2024 for ca was a brand perception year it was right guys um brand perception is at an all-time low uh we could maximize our revenue w w our revenue with current strategies that we've, that we've been working on but it's just not gonna cut it if we continue down this path let's pour money into monthly warhammer patches recoup our losses from pharaoh uh let's not release a new game and instead focus on hearing our fans and making them and their opinions heard that's what I think 2024 has been about. We need more positive perception before we do anything else. And maybe sometime around November, December, when Christmas is on the way, spirits are high, they'll do another big comprehensive survey to understand brand perception to a, a couple of unannounced games maybe that they're developing based on that. They'll either announce and release a major game in 2025 or they will continue the current ethos of brand perception, releasing Warhammer 3 DLC content that is really hearing and, and listening to the audience and catering to them and keep recouping the lost goodwill that, you know, huge uh, damaging uh, events that have happened over the last couple of years. And then again, wait for the right moment to announce the next uh, big, big game, probably the back end of next year. Like I said, uh, that's when spirits are really highest, right? Um, so yeah, that's how I see the next couple of years going. There are two potential avenues. That's how I see 2024 has been. And um, yeah, that's how I basically wanted to add my hat into the ring of discussion about whether Total War has fallen or not. Basically, my opinion, it's falling. It hasn't fallen yet, but the potential for it to fall is very much higher than it's ever been before. Um, but there is still potential here for CA to turn things around as well. We're still at that crossroads. Pharaoh wasn't the game people, a lot of people were waiting for. And so some of them, at least, are still waiting to see what that game is going to be like. Um, equally lots of other people have left modders have left and that apathy is growing and and the as long as that grows as, as long as the discourse is disrespectful it's dismissive uh it's going to grow and grow uh ca is not going to hear and 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 listen to what people really want the vision of where they want the franchise to go and it will stagnate and the franchise will die that's how total war falls just as as legend has described it um, but yeah, as I said, there is a way for it to uh, not fall. There's a way for a future game to come out or two that caters to everyone uh, that proves that CA is listening, that they care, that is released at a, uh, a reasonably fair price point for the content that is uh, being delivered. 
And that for the historical side includes features that have been removed that many people have been asking for, that touches on a period that many people for years have been asking for, and that uh, that doesn't have as much of an influence as uh, newer games so far has had uh, from the Warhammer games, especially on the campaign and on the battle side. Uh, all of this I've discussed uh, in much more detail than I have um, before this video. So if you want to understand what I mean by that, go into my previous content that I've released. And you can go and watch other videos that Legend has released and um, people like Voland have released, even though I don't really agree with uh, the way he treats his viewers and and the, and the community. Um, yeah, there, there are lots of uh, ways in which uh, lots of, and, and modders as well. Modders are really the people who know the ins and outs of these games, and they can really describe in huge detail how the franchise has changed. So you can just go and ask any modder and they will tell you. Um, but yeah, essentially, that's the point. It's 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 that the, the, the franchise has changed. Yes, there are new players here uh, who, who maybe in a way are the majority of what the community is right now, but it hasn't fallen yet. The Total War franchise has not fallen. Um, so yeah, I guess... Uh, that's going to be it for today, guys. That's that's what I want to talk about. Just add my hat into the ring. Um, and and I implore, just as Legend did, uh, to uh, ask other YouTubers to continue the conversation, uh, to uh, express how they feel, uh, what, they are, what their kind of vision is like for the future of the franchise, what, where they think uh, the, the franchise has developed and evolved into, what they think about the newer games versus the old. You know, this isn't about a fantasy versus historical divide it's never been about that it's been about good and fun enjoyable total war games uh, for people like me it's more so on the historical side but you can just see why the historical games haven't been that enjoyable of late and it's been influenced uh you know uh, and like i said uh, it's because of creative assembly's design decision making having these games uh, have mechanics and features that are heavily influenced by um the fantasy side of the franchise and that they have no place in historical games or oh, they they do but maybe not to the extent that they've been implemented um so yeah that's gonna be it for today guys that's how i wanted to just kind of add my uh uh perspective into the conversation um i hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative if you did give it a like and drop any thoughts or questions in the comment section below just like i say in every video i'd love to hear what you think uh, as well so let me know in the comment section below i usually read all every single comment um and you know maybe i shouldn't but i do I, I really do care about what people think and 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 like to engage in this kind of discourse respectfully as well uh i don't appreciate dismissive comments um i don't think they have a place here if you're going to do that i'm you know I, i'm not open to it um i i am very much going to be open to uh types of comments that continue the conversation in a respectful and, and positive way. Right. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more like this. That is a bit more kind of opinionated, talking a bit about the state of Total War franchise, yada yada, uh, and the future and what I think might happen next. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.